everyone. Welcome to WePass first ever online webinar. My name is Camille Myers-Jones. I'm the webinar coordinator and moderator for this presentation. At WePass.com, we help medical professionals prepare for their board certification exams through effective online and mobile tools. Our current subjects include therapeutic medical physics, diagnostic medical physics, medical dosimetry, and radiation therapy. In addition to our online exam prep tools, this particular webinar is designed to help medical physicists preparing for the board exam, particularly oral and part two, or medical physicists preparing for maintenance of certification exam. This presentation titled Physics and Clinical Applications of HDR will last approximately one hour in length. And at the very end, we will include a Q&A portion we're also recording this webinar, and starting tomorrow, the video will be available for any subscribers of WePass.com for a very limited time. And I'll make sure to remind you of this at the very end of this presentation, and I'll provide a link for anyone interested in subscribing. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our webinar speaker, Kai Do. Kai Do is a senior medical physicist certified by the American Board of Radiology and has worked at Mercy Medical Center Radiation Oncology in Baltimore, Maryland since 2006. So welcome, Kai. I will now turn this webinar over to you. Give me just a second to show him on the screen. Okay, so sorry about that, everybody. So now, uh, in this talk, I'm going to have some kind of objectives uh, uh, why we pick HDR. That means what's the advantages for the HDR and what's the physics behind that. And uh, I may talk about a little bit about the concepts of the radiobiology. And then uh, I'm going to talk about the applicators for uh, like a GYN, breast, and a skin lesion and a little, little bit about the treatment planning and uh, a commissioning treatment planning system. If I have time, so I'm going to talk about the uh, radiation safety and the quality insurance. And the uh, question would be asked, what is HDR advantage? So first, so, Let's make it clear that what does HDR mean? Based on the dose rate for brachytherapy, you can have three categories. The first is a high dose rate. High dose rate will have 12 gray power, maybe greater than that. For lower dose rate LDR, so dose rate so less than two gray per hour between high dose rate and the low dose rate and we called MDR, the not that high, not that low. And uh, as we know, the HDR source is iridium-192. That source has dimension like a 4.5 millimeter in length and one millimeter in diameter. And this kind of gamma emission with energy probably 400 keV. And usually we have the uh, source with activity of 10 curie. And this source has half-life 74 days. And now, so we're talking about HDR advantages. We compare it with what kind of modality. For example, we can compare it with uh, actinal beam radiotherapy it's called the EBRT. So we know that HDR is kind of short range treatment because we placed iridium-192 source close to the target and the radiation will be from inside out. That means the normal tissue and organ surrounding that target would be spired. And for some uh, hard geometry part like uh, nose, ear, sometimes it's hard for external beam to reach and you can do it with HDR. 
And then another important difference between the HDR and the EBRT, that's a very high average dose inside the target, which can be like 150% uh, of the prescribed dose. But for external beam, you really like like a, a pretty flat dose, like 95 to 110%. And comparable is LDR, the HDR shows like a higher dose rate. And you have a shorter treatment time, and that's kind of outpatient. The patient doesn't have to stay in hospital. And as you know, HDR that has remote the loading, you don't have to manually load source into the patient. In the source position and the dwell time, that can be precisely controlled. It's safe to our staff. It's safe to the patient. And because those rate is quite high, not that high, I mean higher than the LDR, and we can have different fractionation. And because it is kind of a different uh, dose rate and fractionation, that may give us different clinical output. And that's why we pick HDR. Now let's uh, talk about a little bit physics behind HDR. Now, so you can see that HDR source, so which is iridium-192, used for nucleotron microselectron. And uh, finger A, that's the real source dimension. And B is the model a scheme for uh, multi color calculation. So you can see in total length, it's about 4.5 millimeter, and diameter is 0.9 millimeter. And usually, so when we're talking about brachytherapy, and then we are based on the APM task group, so like 43. That paper defined those rate. Now you can see the dose rate and uh, on the right side, the iochroma strength, and lambda is dose rate constant, and the GL, that's the linear geometry function, and GL, that's the linear radio dose function, and for F, that's the uh, anisotropy function. And uh, you can see the angles and the distance are defined in the uh, this uh, picture. And the reference point is one cm away from the center line and in just the normal incidence. So, Also, this report defines uh, radio dose function and uh, geometry function. Also, define the iochroma strength and also the unit used for iochroma strength. And the when I, we have iochroma strength, and then we can get those with a constant lambda at the reference point, like a 1 cm away from the center line and the 90 degree. The other way, so we have experiment set up in order to get measured the data for residual function and anisotropy function. I just show you that the uh, radio dose function curve. The here, so I listed the three, you see curves. The blue one, that's HDR source. And the red one, and the green one, and there are electron, one, six MeV, and the other one that's 18 MeV. And then you can see the difference. And also, so I gave you an anisotropy function. The curve so looks like, uh, see, um, 
that's relative intensity versus angle. And then you have a different distance, like, like from uh, so five millimeter, 10 millimeter away from the uh, source. And now, so we're prepared to so get into concept of the radio biology. So usually, radio biology is dealing with of the interaction of radiation with the human body. That radiation may interact directly with uh, DNA, may interact with uh, cells. And uh, we have four hours, maybe someone like a five, like a repair, repopulation, redistribution, reoxygenation, and reduce sensitivity. And all this describe how the radiation interacts with uh, cells. And the most popular expression for uh, radiobiology, that's the linear quantitic model that describes the cell killing. So this is survival fraction versus doses. And you can see that as those increases, and the cell will be died. And here, our final beta result is introduced. The blue one is standing low alpha beta ratio, and the green one stands for the high alpha beta ratio curve. And you can see the solder. So currently we use like uh, like a four external beam, you have uh, uh, 180 centigrade, and you have for 25 fraction, and that's based on this curve because the solder that means a uh, cell can repair by themselves, and then you can continue to treat. Not uh, once time you gave too much dose, but you can give not that much dose, and then give the time for the tissue to recover, to repair, and then you go the next day, give more and more, and uh, that's the uh, uh, principle for the uh, treatment. And now we are often talking about BED, so which is a biologically effective dose. Because the radiation interacts with the human body and uh, the cells would be killed. Uh, some cells would be survived. And then we have a survival factor from LQ model. And we define that uh, survival factors, uh, you can see here, uh, the big D, that's a total prescribed dose. A small d is uh, one fraction dose. N, that's the total fraction number. Alpha, beta, that's the parameters introduced by the model. And then, so we can define it BD as the following. So finally, you got a big D, that expression. And we know that alpha beta ratio is 10 for tumor and three for normal tissue. And then lately, lately so we're going to use that formula to do some uh, BED calculation. Well, for example, we have a uh, patient treated with uh, two degree in 25 fraction I mean, two degree by 25 fraction, that's total you have 50 degree, but you can calculate BD, that's 60 degree. Or for brain SRS, and like uh, 24 degree, just in one fraction. And you can calculate that. So 24 degree in one fraction, you got higher BD like 81.6 degree. But you know that for the conventional treatment, you treat 25 fraction, 
So each fraction you gave to agree, and you got a six degree, right? And for uh, another, uh, like a brain case, that's the eight degree by three fractions. And we can calculate that. So that's 43 degree. That's, we just use the uh, BD formula or we mentioned in the previous slides. So there are more examples. Yeah. So for whole brain, you may treat patient with a two degree by 15 fractions and you got 36 gray BD. Or you can use like a th three degree by 10 fractions and you got a 39 degree. That's good. If you use 2.5 degree by 10 fraction, you got a less BD. So we, just, we can skip that. And now we can look at the uh, those really impact on BED. We just uh, play with the BED formula. We introduced uh, those read is big R and treatment time big T. And also we introduced the incomplete repair and continuous exposure G. G can be expressed by two over mu time T. A mu stands for the sublation damage. And then so you can see the BED is proportional to the dose rate. R and treatment time, you see here, and then inversely proportional to the uh, uh, sublation damage. And if you have the patient treated with different modalities, um, you can sum all the modality, all the radiation together, and then give total BD. For example, a patient had external beam, and also a patient had brachytherapy. I mean, treat the same location, the same target volume. They are not separate. I mean, they're treated, treated separately, but they are treated the same PDV, or, or at least uh, they are related. And then you can combine them together. Now let's turn to uh, applicators use the four HDR. So we know that, so uh, HDR applicators uh, can be used for breast, a brain, um, So let, let's look at the example. So we know the partial breast is radiation. And here's uh, LAS techniques. APBI, that means accelerated partial breast irradiation. Um, we can do uh, an like external beam. Also, we can do uh, intraoperative radiotherapy. And also, we can do interstitial multicatheter. But uh, today, I'm going to focus on the mammocyte, contora, and the savi. So here is the interstitial brachytherapy that's multi entry and a multi catheter. And so this technique has long, long history. Yeah. And uh, now it's mammocyte. A single entry and a single catheter. Um, for breast, and a certain urine can make a small card and injured that balloon. Smamsat is balloon based applicator. And then so can fit in the liquid. And the, you know, the PTV we created from the Cavity. The so cavity is balloon, the covered part, and the PTV is the one cm away from the uh, balloon cavity. So that's that's PTV is Donna. And uh, so, my site is uh, developed a new model. 
as called the uh, mortal human. And this new model has a single intrin and uh, four catheters. One is located in central part, and the three catheters for your call lumens distribute uh, around the central one with uh, 120 degrees separate. And uh, you can so fit in a liquid and you can shock out air. So that's good design now. But you need to know that. So preferably locate the uh, lumen is only two millimeter away from the central line. So that gives you not that much dose modulated. And the contour is another applicator, as also balloon based applicator. Uh, I have uh, seen that part. So that's a contour applicator. And uh, for left side, I just put uh, uh, contour and the MAM side together. And then you can see the difference. And as you know, a MAM side requires the symmetry check. So tolerance is within two millimeter. And I think uh, Contora has a similar tolerance because symmetry, if beyond that, in general, the physician doesn't want to treat it. All right. And the Contora is able to modulate those. Even the cavity is not, I mean, the PTV is not uh, spherical, and you can treat it. But here is the uh, uh, what it looks like for the new mammocyte model. So there's four casters. The central one as number four, and the start of number one, and then two and three. You can see here, and then you can identify them from CT image. Yeah, a central one. So that's number four, and here is Cantora applicator. So you have four catheters. Number five is located in the central part. And one to four catheters are located properly. And you can see the maximum separation for the uh, peripheral uh, catheter is five millimeter away from the central catheter. Uh, you remember that, right? So for side mortal lumen, that's two millimeter, maybe three millimeter away from uh, uh, the central catheter. So that means the Cantora applicator uh, may have uh, a much more dose modulation compared with uh, uh, mammocyte. And another applicator is Savi. Savi is kind of a strut adjusted volume irradiation. So that's kind of a single entry multi catheter. And uh, you have four options based on the cavity size. Uh, you have uh, six plus one, and eight plus one, and 10 plus one. That means you have a seven catheter, you can have a nine catheter, you can have 11 catheter. So catheter more, and you have you can treat a big size. And uh, this kind of uh, is a procedure for insertion of uh, sub applicator. So first, it is to make a card and insert uh, applicator. And then you expand. And then you do CT scan. And then you do planning. And then you can to give patient uh, radiation. All the sub mammocyte and the Cantora they use the same dose pattern, like uh, 3.4 degree by 10 fraction twice a day. So in one week, so patient might be treated and finished. Then here is the example. You can see the dose conformance, conformance to the cavity. And the 
even the cavity is not uh, regular, so you still can you are able to treat it. Now, so let's turn to the uh, uh, patient selection. They're actually, different uh, societies they have different uh, standards. Now, I list here uh, from uh, like American Brachytherapy Society and the uh, that's ABS and ASBS. You can look at the bottom and Astro. Uh, but I intend to have the patient which is older, 50 years old. And uh, a tumor size should be less than three centimeter. And the patient should be in stage T1 and T2. And the margins should be negative and uh, no lymph nodes involved. So in that case, the patient can be treated with uh, uh, pass breast irradiation. So here I list the uh, so the parameters used for the three kind of uh, applicators. So mammocyte has a li little bit a bigger skin distance, which is uh, seven millimeter, and compared with savi, which may be like three millimeter, and the skin dose the savi has. Uh, seems an uh, advantage over other two techniques. And for planning, you already have V90 is greater than 90% or V95 greater than 95%. But you can see that Mammocyte and Contora, they are bloom-based. And the good thing for them is V200. They have like 10 cc, and you can see Savi that's 20 cc. That's much bigger than the balloon based, because Savi is a strata based, and the tissue would so grow inside cavity. And now we can see so advantages for the multi cast applicators. So you can have good dose conformality and uh, available for short skin cavity distance. And the dose can be modulated like, widely and treat time is shorter. And the patient is outpatient. The patient doesn't have to stay in hospital. Now, so we have finished the, uh, the breast applicator, now let's uh, uh, switch to the applicators for surface. So the most popular surface applicators from Nucleotron and the Varin. So for big lesion uh, with uh, like a three by three CM, I mean, so diameter is uh, like bigger than three CM, so it can be treated with a Freiburg flip. If smaller, you can use Valencia or this uh, applicator. So Freiburg flip is composed of uh, small spheres, just one cm in diameter, and the catheter can go through this central hole, and then um, source can go through uh, this catheter and deliver the radiation. And it is the big, biggest one we ever treat as a bilateral breast. And the patient had breast reduction and the scar left on the patient. And the scar all the way from left to the right. And uh, the 60, 60 cather that we used for treating that patient. And we know for a mammocyte and Cantora, a Savi, they are using the same dose pattern, right? 3.4 degree per fraction 
and the total you have 10 fraction total those is 34 degree uh, twice a day and uh, so we done the treatment in one week and for Freiburg flip the skin lesion so I'll, the minute you have two kind of uh, lesions the first is skin cancer that one you need to treat uh, uh, a higher dose uh, usually we use like a four degree per fraction by 10 fraction so you have a total dose of uh, 40 degree or you can so make short uh, so like a five degree by eight or you can do so six degree by six fraction but you cannot treat patient daily you have to treat every other day and you have to prescribe to the types of 1cm because you need to cover a little bit deeper because uh, um, I mean physician they're worried about um, so it, that dives uh, just, just like uh, some like a mammal side so we have the uh, PTV that is 1cm away from this the applicator surface and the same thing here so you treat uh, from the surface down 1cm and uh, for skin uh, keloid or scars uh, we give a less dose that's a fraction dose of a four degree with three fractions total you have 12 degree and then you treat the patient daily and also you can prescribe the dose to shallower uh, there's only five millimeter in depth and uh, you know the treatment planning has the same uh, target uh, a standard like a V90 is greater than 90 percent or V95 greater than 95 percent so with 90 or V95 uh, that means the volume to receive 90 percent of the prescribed dose is covered by the 90 percent of the ice dose line so that's that's the meaning so you should know that and here example for light lesion so we have phantom and uh, so you're the doctor so draw the uh, uh, the volume of the target and then so give one cm margin so here I use uh, actually so you cannot see the uh, uh, target about it I use the uh, CD wire to label this the PTV that means you have uh, a tumor drawn by the daughter and also you give one cm away from that tumor now you have the ptv and now you make a mask and then so you attach fabric fly to the mask and now you are ready to treat the patient here is squamous cell carcinoma we treat it uh, with uh, four degree per fraction by 10 fractions we treat it uh, every other day oh, you can see that yeah pretty good right so a left side that's the picture showing pre-treatment just after the, the five treatments and you can see so that lesion almost disappear and here is a plan for that uh, high neck case the head case and the so uh this frag of flip and uh, here's target so from the surface down here that's five minute uh now this one uh cm and here is the one i just mentioned the previous lay so we traded uh bilateral breast keloid the so 60 character used and you have to label the carefully because uh, that's easy to make a mistake and then here is the uh, plan for that the uh, bilateral breast uh, keloid yeah and you can see that part 3d and that's beautiful and you can see the dose the cover along with uh, the five millimeter depth So now the fabric flap 
has uh, some advantages over other modalities. It's a convenient, non-invasive technique for skin lesions. Uh, that technique is showing a uh, very good cosmetic output. And treatment time is not that long. I mean, just compare with uh, like external beam. External beam, you, you have like uh, 25 fractions. That means five weeks. Or for this one, you, you treat just uh, like a few weeks and you can finish the treatment. And that's easy to implement. And uh, so fabric fly can be used for uh, almost any side, like head, neck, breast, arms, legs, so ears, nose. And also you have the option for the intraoperative. And it's FDA approved, so it's good for reimbursement. And now, so let's turn to the applicators for GYN. And in most the uh, applicators we used in my center a cylinder and the tandem ring. And then you may have other, uh, so like a tandem ovoid, or then you may have a tandem a ring and additional catheters. But all these, uh, so uh, used for different purposes. And here's smith sleeve that is used with a tandem ring. And here is the uh, picture showing you the applicator dimension. I may, I may want you to know that uh, how so we define the uh, tandem angle. You see the angle here? That's the tandem angle. And how you define the ring angle here, the ring tube. And from here down here, that's the ring angle. And the tandem and the ring, they should be perpendicular here. That's 90 degree. That means if you use a 45 degree ring, you need a 45 degree tandem. Otherwise, so you're gonna have trouble. And you should know how the ring dimension is defined. Like uh, now usually you have like a three uh, CM ring. So here is a 3 cm from center to center, not the inner diameter, not the outer diameter. And here is example for tandem marine. And this is this kind of city based planning. And uh, here's the ring you can see clearly. And uh, you need to use a uh, dummy source. And you can define the first while position. The here is the first while position. And then so you need to activate the first for planning. First, you need to uh, identify so catheter. And then you do reconstruction for each catheter. And then you can activate your source, the while position. And then so you need to uh, define a left A and the right A point. And then so. Uh, you do optimization. And here example for a cylinder. A cylinder, so the go inside is the active, the way the south position. And uh, so usually um, for a cylinder, the pre prescription dose is uh, on the surface or the five millimeter away from the surface depending on the physician or depending on the lesion. And uh, this picture shows you how so the definition of the A and the B points. Uh, A, you see that is uh, so 2 cm above and it's 2 cm away from the center line. And the B point that is uh, 5 cm away from the center line and 2 cm above the uh, ring. And uh, here show you so uh, orientation for tandem marine. And now let's let me uh, talk a little bit about the radiation safety and uh, radiation protection, um, because so we are dealing with uh, uh, 
the high radiation of the source. So we know that so iridium-192 source has energy like 400 keV. Uh, when I got a new source, which has like a 10 curie, right? And uh, so we have a typ typical room for SDR. That's the uh, 60 cm concrete for the wall. But now we are using a Linux treatment room. So we share that room for the HDR. So we do not have a uh, uh, HDR room. But I think the uh, shielding should be enough. And here is the room. So we have HDR unit and have patient that called for patient. And we are sitting here, that's the console. And here's door, that's maze. And the yellow square, you can see that, that's radiation monitors. That's the requirement required. You need to put the inside, the one inside, the one outside. When you have the radiation, and that should work, indicating so radiation is on or off. And also we have a video camera, two video cameras inside. So you can monitor the patient, I can monitor so your unit. In the uh, so HDR treatment room, uh, it's designed uh, just like that. Um, but we need to uh, calculate uh, how thick uh, concrete which will be used for the shielding. And you have the uh, transmission factor B, and the right side you have uh, P. You know that's that's the uh, ideal dose rate you're going to give to the. Uh, uh, like a public or con controlled area or uncontrolled area. And uh, D is distant from your uh, source to the point of interest. And then so W is workload and T that's occupancy factor. And uh, you just uh, find something so which is correct to do this. And uh, some units used here, like exposure, that's Rinken R, and the radiation dose, that's gray. And you have those equivalent, that's silver word. And here, so for shielding purpose, you just uh, let uh, uh, exposure, like a 1R equals 1 centigrade, and there's 1 meter silver word. This is just for shielding purpose. That they are different. You see, 1R is exposure. And the uh, centigrade as those that those as energy absorbed uh, by the uh, uh, the volume and exposure that's the uh, charge generated by the radiation uh, they are different and those equivalent so that's not direct measure uh, quantity right. And the, so what do you have to know is the total dose to deliver to the outpatient in a week. You need this data for a week. And then so you calculate the uh, workload for a week. So W is the uh, uh, workload. You have gamma, F, A, and T. So we're going to so see this. Uh, this slice, uh, gamma. So it's called the exposure rate constant, and uh, you can get it. That's that's the uh, 0.48, uh, and the F factor that that's the conversion factor. You convert exposure to dose, and you have F is 0.96 centigrade per Rinken. and the treatment time per week you can get. So from uh, uh, like uh, Dose for the patient, and you have total patient, and the one patient you have dose, and then you have total dose, and you have dose rate at one cm, and then you can get uh, the time. And now, so for example, we have we have like a ten curie, a new source, and we ha we treat at twenty five patient per week, and maybe twenty five treatments is reasonable, and uh, so. We just uh, suppose 10 grade dose to per patient. 
and then suppose the uh, uh, dose rate is uh, one grid per minute. And uh, so now we're talking about the control area. So now the total time you have probably like a four hour. And then so we can calculate the uh, workload. So you have a gum, uh, you have F, you have A, and you have T, right? So now you, you got the workload. And uh, so now I I want a target dose rate at the control area that should be not exceeding 0.04 centigrade per week. But the point of the interest is two meters away from your source. And you can get a calculation and you get that. And so we got a transmission factor and that's 0 0.008. And you can get the uh, 48 is concrete. So from a uh, curve over here, and you got, so here is uh, uh, B, that's transmission factor. And then so you can get the uh, concrete thickness. Also, you can use the lead. So they have different, uh, so uh, in a density. And for radiation survey, you need survey meters. Usually you need uh, the two kind of survey meters, the GM survey meter and the N-chamber. So you know that the GM survey meter can find a hot spot. And N chamber can give you uh, data quantitatively. And the size areas that has uh, like a public and a restricted. So uh, NCRP recommend uh, so that's 10 MR per week. That's for controlled area. And uncontrolled area, that's 2 MR per week. And also, you should know. At any hour, exposure rate shouldn't be greater than to MR. And also you should know LARA. So that means as low as uh, reasonably achievable, right? And then here is the occupancy factor. So like office, living area, lives. So the factor is one. And for the corridors, parking, restrooms, that means one over four, maybe one over eight. And you have occasionally the people there, and like waiting rooms, there way, and to close it. So you can have a smaller uh, occupancy, occupancy factor. And then you have the HDR system, and you need to uh, survey around the treatment room. So you can pick uh, like, uh, so console area and the door and the hallway, another hallway and the storage room. And then, so calculate to see, uh, here is sample, like uh, we already surveyed and we got exposure rate, like uh, for console area, we got 0.1 MR power and you can calculate that. So you have measured data and you have occupancy factor, you have beam on time. And finally, you have that data. So it's far away from the uh, 10 MR per hour uh, per week. And uh, also, we have like a hallway survey. And this data, we found that's 0.5 MR per hour. And then you calculate that, and you find it. So that's like 0.5 MR per week is much less. And then you also, you need to survey around SDR device. Uh, like, uh, so you know where that source is located. You need to survey that and around that. And you also need to survey like a 30 cm away from the surface. And you also need to survey uh, like a one meter away from the uh, source. And then when you have uh, so a uh, new source, or you have uh, like a treatment plan system, you need to commission your system, and then you need to input the uh, source parameters, and then you need to test your contouring tools, and image fusion function, and you will do plan, and then you can do a secondary calculation to check the plan if the plan is good or not, and you need to make sure that work connection is good. 
uh, like from CT to your planning system, you can send the CT image to your planning system. And then so you can uh, do planning with the CT image. And then you can send that plan to the uh, HDR console. And so, and then so you may do a, a, a delivery according to the plan. And uh, so see the a record that you can print that or not. So it's quite or not. All this stuff you need to make sure. And then for the uh, treatment planning system commissioning, uh, I think you all need also to do some kind of geometry measurement. Like uh, you scan the phantom, like 30 by 30 by 30. And uh, so you have CT reconstruction dimension. And then you can send that image over to your treatment planning system. And you compare, uh, so CT reconstructed dimension. And you can compare with uh, real dimension you measured. And then you have the dimension from your planning system. And they should be consistent. Whenever, so you have uh, HDR source exchange, and the physicist should be uh, responsible for like a new source drive position check and uh, verify source activity. And uh, so make sure planning system the works. Uh, make sure your network works well. So the currently, so I think that's a popular uh, a remote afterloader system. So left one, that's varying very source AX, and the right one, that's the Lagitar Flexitron. Uh, Flexitron is able to provide two sources. You can have a high dose rate, or you can have uh, some low energy uh, source. And then for source calibration, you need to have uh, uh, the wire chamber and uh, electrometer. And all the both uh, will be cal calibrated by the ADCL uh, while at the four two years. And then this is the schematic of a wire chamber. So uh, you have a chamber. Uh, this is the IR, this IR, and then you have uh, so collection electrode, which is aluminum, and also you have aluminum wall. And uh, here, uh, you can so uh, put the source in, and then so you can get the reading, and uh, you need to do uh, temperature and pressure correction. And the first thing you need to uh, make sure uh, the wire chamber is in the range of uh, uh, your, um, a source activity. And uh, so need to make sure uh, the ion chamber is stable and the response, response is correct and uh, it should be sens enough, sensitivity enough to detect uh, your activity, I mean radiation. And you need to verify uh, to make sure uh, your wire chamber, your wire chamber, has uh, sweat range. The sweat range is the uh, just flat range. And how do you determine that? You just uh, uh, make a many measurement. You source position at a different uh, dwell position, and then you have reading, and then you find the maximum, right? And then you know, okay. So here is the maximum part for my end chamber. So next time when you calibrate your source, you can mainly so uh, have the wire position around the sweat range. So for source calibration, so you need to have calibrated wire chamber and calibrated electrometer. And uh, you need to know calibration factor and uh, electrometer. Uh, so that factor. And the, so when you have that, you can the measure that the data here, that M. So that's M. And then you have uh, calibration factor K, and you have temperature and pressure correction factor. And then you can get the uh, 
uh, source activity. And you need, need to verify the source position. So you, so I think so you can use different ways. You can expose film and check the position. So like here. And also you can use check ruler. And this is the new uh, check ruler uh, from the nucleotron. And the source can stay like uh, 200 here. That, so you can design uh, whatever you want the source to stay. And then you can take an image. And that image showing where uh, that source is. And uh, almost running out of time. So, uh, but uh, I just uh, mentioned a little bit about the uh, uh, license application and the maintenance for HDR system. Uh, for Maryland state, uh, the, if you uh, have uh, HDR material license, that's kind of material license, not machine. So, because the iridium, 192, 192, and then you need to have uh, so submit your application for that. When you have that, it's valid for seven years. And you, uh, if you pass a random inspection, you're okay. You'd have to pay fine for maintaining license, and you can send an amendment for a new users, uh, a new uh, physicist or something, so you have a part exchange or you need to uh, notify the state. And you should have uh, like a reading safety program. And uh, so you, and you do like, uh, so a lot of procedures, you ha should have that procedure and how you uh, uh, receive and return the source and uh, how you do a sort of calibration so uh, you put a like a notice to the employee and uh, so you should have radiation bad readings posted right and you should have like phone number of rso and physicists and you should have phone number uh for the sdr manufacturer and you should have the uh, state or nrc phone number for reporting your medical event and that's for seven years and then so you have to renew that so when you renew, it's just like a new user. You just submit all the material, so it the previously. Like, uh, so you need to uh, clarify the purpose of application and uh, what kind of source you're going to have. Uh, so what's the activity you claim to have? And the, uh, so you need to so submit material concerning about the uh, RSO, so physicist, uh, physician, and how you uh, conduct uh, staff training in control area and the uh, so what kind of facility and equipment you have you should have uh, like a floor plan or for the state to uh, uh, you know review and uh, so you should have a radiation safety program just like we mentioned before that and uh, so how often you have a meeting so what's the responsibility for RISO for the members uh, all this stuff you need to you need to have a uh, cube MP program. So just like uh, you need to have like a written directive, you need to verify the patient identity. You need to make sure plan and calc so they are in agreement. Uh, each treatment uh, should be consistent with your written directive. So any deviation should be identified and evaluated. And uh, so Uh, now here, so we just mentioned the uh, uh, like uh, medical event. Uh, so here, so from a coma, that's code of Maryland. Uh, if you treat patient, that's wrong. That's not patient uh, to be treated. Or you treat the patient with a wrong type, like a wrong energy or wrong so radioactive material. Or you treat the site is not correct. For example, they're supposed to trade the left, but you trade the right side. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's medical event. If you treat the correct patient, you treat uh, you use correct type, uh, correct side. But you found you gave uh, radiation. It's like uh, twenty percent difference from the uh, prescribed dose. Oh, 
or the 20% dose the follows of the uh, target volume. Or you may so treat patients uh, uh, in one week, that's five fractions, for example, for external beam, and that differs by the 30%. Or you treat patients with 50% off. Not just agree then, if differ 50%, that means uh, no matter greater or less than 50%, that's a medical event. And also you have like a radiation machine like from Melinic, so uh, almost the same, similar, but uh, you're gonna have like I, I, I SBRT, like uh, that's 10% differ from the total prescribed dose, that's a medical event, yeah. And here, so I have some signs for radiation. You need to know that for uh, radiation area, you have high radiation area, a very high radiation area. That means you need to know. Uh, so what's those rate? Uh, what's the exposure rate for that? Usually you measure from 30 centimeters from the radiation source or surface. Uh, that's 0.1 RAM per hour. That's for the high radiation area. Why the high radiation area? So that defined by the absorbed dose, that five degrees per hour at one meter away from the radiation source or surface. And then, so you have more radiation science here, that radiation area. So you have those rate like uh, just 0 0.05, uh, um, 0 0.005 uh, the RAM per hour. And uh, for your heart lab, you also need a radioactive material. You put on the door, and also you need to put this uh, radiation material sign on the treatment room door for the HDR treatment. And uh, another one, so I think that's the uh, uh, the part of uh, uh, transportation. So you have a transport index uh, is a TI is sort for that. And the TI is determined at one meter from the package surface. So TI, so you measure that data, like uh, like a 0.5. So like MR per hour, and you put the data for TI. And also, so they have uh, a definition uh, from the uh, surface of uh, that package. And then, so you know the label, right, on your HDR. Uh, the source package and the seven that's for radiation and so you have label one two three you have white and a yellow and it's defined by this this data uh, i think so so i'm uh, done uh the uh so uh presentation i'm uh glad to uh have the uh, i mean take the questions you may have so it says how to define the skin thickness in apbi three millimeter or five millimeter. Also, when you mention distance from skin, from wire to wire, is that defined from device surface or PDV evolve to mm. outer surface of skin or inward surface of skin? Uh, this is a really very good question. Yeah, actually for skin uh, definition, so uh, depends on the physician and uh, uh, we are using like uh, uh, inside three millimeter. We define that as skin distance. And then, so below that, now we prescribed to uh, five millimeter. That means you have uh, uh, eight millimeter. In the so different the centers, they have different uh, uh, definition. Uh, for the other center, I know when they define the uh, uh, three millimeter outer and thirty meter inner, and you have a total like uh, three millimeter uh, skin. Yeah. And the uh, uh, prescription. That's from the source position down D 
the uh, uh, the 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 PTV. I mean, the deeper edge in the so. Uh, this is one question. So I think so I answered that. And the next, the uh, question is uh, for memo side or memo side, uh, like uh, Bryce HDR. At uh, what skin dose do you see skin break down? Would the inter treatment or delay remaining fractions? Uh, that's a good question. So um, usually, so physicians they look at this. Uh, um, um, we can find the dose not exceeding. Uh, like one fifty percent, but so far uh, we haven't uh, seen the uh, skin break down. But really, we can see the skin reaction, like uh, skin becomes uh, like a uh, reddish, and uh, uh, in this case, uh, we are just stop treating uh, for a few days, uh, and. Uh, That's just I had one case just uh, stop treating uh, and then so we redo the planning and uh, so uh, reduce the skin dose uh, that's what we treated the hair so next question is can you give an overview of the some tests that would be necessary when commissioning an HDR unit and the treatment planning system used for HDR. <laughs> oh yeah, so uh, um, when you are going to commission uh, your new HDR system with uh, treatment and planning system, and the, you need to uh, know your uh, HDR uh, planning system uh, for example, you need to get the training from the manufacturer, and you you basically you know how you uh, do planning and how you import export the image, uh, and you make you need to make sure uh, that the test uh, uh, I have done uh, for the commissioning uh, for the uh, planning system. Including um, CT, CT communication with uh, my treatment planning system, and my treatment planning system with my HDR console, and for uh, you need to testify uh, the uh, CT uh, image with your planning system, and uh, so you scan the phantom. Or you have uh, some uh, uh, special phantom, and you scan that. You can examine the geometry, and you can examine the volume, and you need to test that uh, from uh, your um, treatment and planning system, and you compare with uh, your CT uh, stuff, and then so you need to input uh, so your source parameters like source strength, strength, and when. Uh, is the uh, source calibration data and time, and make sure the time is correct. And uh, so, for planning system, you also need to uh, run some planning. Uh, also, you need to run uh, um, uh, like different applicators. So you have like a cylinder, a tandem, or uh, maybe a survey, and you run this. And also, you can run so. Not uh, those around the applicator. You may run a little far away, so not just uh, like five cm away from your source. You may run like ten cm. So, and then you you do a, a secondary check to so see what happened. And uh, also, you need to uh, uh, run planning, and uh, so send it over to your HDR uh, machine. At the machine, when you have new HDR machine, and uh, you have to uh, have to do some survey, um, you have uh, uh, three meters, which is uh, valid, 
And so uh, I saw calibrated. And the first thing you need to survey around the HDR machine. Let's see uh, what's the uh, exposure rate around that. But usually, so when you survey like a three, uh, like a thirty meter, a thirty centimeter away from the uh, HDR system, usually you got like almost uh, like a zero. And if you have the reading, you suspect it's too high or it's not uh, appropriate, you need uh, to talk with uh, uh, so the engineer from the manufacturer. And you make sure that is correct. And then so you do a planning and you export your source, you give it the radiation, and put the film and expose it the uh, so a bunch of uh, 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 a dual position. And you can make a mark on your so film. And then so you compare with uh, exposure. That's a black spot, right? You can check that, see they are uh, within one millimeter or not. If not, you need to adjust that, and then so expose that again. And I think that's important. And then you need to so have the uh, morning QA procedure for the machine, because you need to work with a therapist, and they're going to do a, a morning QA for that. Uh, so, so generally, you need to uh, test if you have the wrong channel, and you should have the interlock. You have you have the correct channel, but you you do not connect the uh, caster, and then you have interlock. So like uh, such something like that, you need to uh, uh, test with the morning QA, and then you should have uh, like emergency training for all the staff. Uh, so working with uh, uh, the system. Uh, like a nurses, a therapist, a physicist, the physicians, the every people, and they should get the, uh, trained for emergency. And all this uh, guy they deal with IDR, they need to have a uh, radiation badge. And then as a physicist, you need to have like a monthly QA or new soft skill change procedure. So what kind of things you need to do? You know what you need to check. So like. Uh, the first thing you need to check the dual position for your source, right? That's important. And then you need to calibrate the source activity. And you should have your wire chamber. You should have uh, your electrometer. And then you uh, should have a thermometer. And uh, so you need to know the pressure. And then when you have that, you uh, uh, you need to check that the strength with the uh, activity you put into your treatment planning system. And you need to develop the uh, a decay table independently. So now you have, uh, uh, for source activity, you have three things, maybe four things. One from your HDR console. And then you have a separate uh, uh, decay table. And you have a decay table from your treatment planning system. And you have the data you measured. And they should be uh, uh, consistent within 3%. But I like like 1%. You can do that. If too high, it's not good. And uh, I think uh, so I'm going to the next. Uh, uh, oh, the one question here. Why did the example have a P is uh, 0.04 centigrade of the uh, that's uh, that's not too much uh, concern about that. I just uh, give the uh, uh, number we think that's low enough, and uh, we should uh, uh, give the number from the NCRP recommendation. And the next question is, uh, what are the top a couple of safety issues associated with HDR? Do you most worry about? Uh, for HDR. Um, for me, I'm I'm really worried about the uh, source activity. Uh, you need to make sure so you measure it correctly, and you you equipment uh, uh, they are calibrated, and uh, you may uh, cross check it if you have a different wire chamber, and uh, so uh, 
and uh, every time you have new source exchange, you need to put that the uh, parameters into your treatment planning system. So that number is not a query. You have to remember that. So you need to make that unit correct. Yeah. And for the treating patient, I'm always uh, worried about the, uh, uh, the source is stuck somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm worried about the, uh, so uh, for it, for the survey, because we have a uh, new flag citron system, uh, that system is uh, very sensitive. Uh, by the beginning, so you have, uh, uh, you know, caster, you know, detected, or you have damage cells coming out for each, so caster uh, detection, right? And then so you pass, and uh, and then so uh, you start uh, like uh, you uh, detect, and then you treat. But sometimes the patient just um, uh, moved a little bit and gave squeeze a little bit on that uh, caster, and uh, so stuck there. And then so we have to uh, so recognize that caster. And the so make the uh, so treatment continue to happen. They here's another question about the uh, IQ model. Uh, the question is going back to the IQ model, the default of a beta ratios that was discussed uh, are 10 for tumor and three for normal tissue. Various recent publications suggested the organ specific alpha beta ratios, however. What would be the most correct method of addressing a question on IQ model for this consideration? <laughs> yeah, you're right. So, uh, uh, so so many uh, research at on IQ model and on uh, these uh, parameters, and then basically, uh, so this uh, this kind of a uh, statistic, uh, you know, results. Uh, like a prostate, uh, you, you know that uh, so alpha ratio is only like 1.5 or 2, something like that. And uh, that's uh, uh, so a lot of, I mean, fluctuations of this data. And uh, so basically, uh, when I have this uh, formula, to do some kind of uh, uh, like a fractionation calculation. For example, a uh, doctor, one trade patient, uh, maybe like uh, 15 fractions, but uh, he wants to treat patient very quick in 10 fractions and they have finished the treatment. And that kind of a calculation, uh, you can use that IQ model and you can do that calculation. And uh, IQ, model, uh, IQ model holds for uh, SRSBRT. And this, uh, so the question is right, yeah. It's uh, hard to say, so uh, what kind of things uh, you can do with uh, uh, this kind of stuff. But um, at least we know that with that uh, model, we can do some kind of uh, fractionation, uh, uh, calculation. And next question is, uh, please describe as the applicator QA, what do you do and how often? Uh, for the HDR applicator, uh, I do an uh, annual check. For applicators, uh, I use uh, CT to scan all the applicators and then check the... Uh, first thing you have to uh, physically check out the applicators that uh, they are not broken and uh, they are in good shape and uh, um, and then so I use a CT scan them annually and uh, you just see there's no crack on them and uh, this is what I'm checking uh, for the applicator and that's mainly I uh, I uh, want to do it, and I do an inventory uh, annually. So, 
Um, I'm not often do that. And if uh, nurses, they remind me, or maybe therapists, they remind me, okay, uh, we found something broken for the applicator, and I check immediately. Uh, so recently, we found that the uh, for tender marine, uh, the ring applicator uh, had a wrong label on it. That's two. Uh, that's twenty-six millimeter diameter. A ring, uh, but it's labeled. 20 millimeter and we do uh, we use that uh, for tender marine so treatment and um, so when I was doing planning and I found the uh, uh, prescription from physician it's giving like two uh, 20 millimeter in diameter but uh, from my measurement from uh, my treatment treatment planning system, that's 26 millimeter. And I bring that question to the uh, physician and the physician so make uh, uh, you know correction for that. And then so we send that question to the manufacturer and finally they said, okay, so that's wrong. The label is wrong. But I've got this right, the label is wrong. And all this stuff, you need to check that. And uh, also need to check the physically, check the uh, no liquid uh coming inside the uh, you know uh the applicator and yeah um so next question uh what are recommendations for the wild time double checks like mu double check for external beam so what are accepted results of this secondary check <clears throat> Uh, so that's that's a good question, and uh, so uh, currently we uh, we have uh, our own uh, developed the uh, spreadsheet uh, to uh, second cock check, second uh, hand uh, check, and also so other centers they are using red cock or maybe some MU check. You can do this kind of. Uh, uh, Check in the, the most time uh, we can find the, the the problem because the uh, sometimes so um, you know when do a planning and they gave a wrong treatment time uh, they gave uh, like a, a a wrong prescription dose. And the wrong maybe dives. I mean, so uh, some as a physician want to trade the surface, and in the planning maybe on the five millimeter away from that. This kind of stuff you may not uh, find that. So when you do a planning, you you have to uh, pay much attention to try to avoid that, and because the calculation may not be able to find that. You do a set second cock. You just use the data from uh, from your planning system, right? Uh, because planning, so you start the wrong way and everything's wrong. And you need to check the prescription, the bad doctor, and uh, check the uh, parameters doctor writing in the prescription. So what's the uh, like uh, a cylinder diameter? So how many cylinders a dome used? And uh, what's the uh, treatment length as given by the doctor? And it was the uh, uh, the point without prescribed dose surface or the five millimeter of some wire. All doubt I want to trade the volume um, or the other part and all this this stuff. But it but the secondary check is really so necessary. And um, the first thing you know, uh, the plan is is done in the right way. And then so you need to check the time. Or the dose, uh, that's correct. Yeah, that's uh, uh, that's one good question. And the, the another question is, how are the uh, well chambers calibrated if there's no prime calibration? Uh, yes, uh, there's no uh, prime uh, primary calibration. Not like a, a from a chamber, right? You have uh, like a, a the higher a free higher uh, calibration. Now, so I. I think so. Uh, the some alive uh, uh, calibrate that with uh, the source, 
for example, now you are you using the wild chamber uh, for the HDR source, and uh, so from the ADCL lab, ADCL, ADCL, I think. So they are using um, a, um, like a like so we are using like a iridium one ninety two right source, and they should have the same source. I mean, uh, they have the uh, uh, iridium one ninety two source, and then they use that to calibrate uh, your end chamber, uh, the wire chamber, and then it, they give you calibration factor. And they don't have uh, like a primary uh, calibration like uh, from chamber. So right, like uh, uh, described by the uh, TG43. And this kind of, uh, so uh, uh, calibration uh, is acceptable. Uh, but uh, we still need to pay much attention uh, about that. And uh, Uh, I think I uh, this all the questions uh, so on the uh, question uh, board. So any questions? So thank you so much, Kai. Um, yes, it looks like we are out of um, all of our questions. So 